<laughs> this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Look, the cat is kind of out of the bag. Ionic thrust is quickly emerging as a viable form of propulsion. It's successfully been used for space applications for decades, and MIT launched an ionic thrust airplane in 2018. My work, though different, has paralleled MIT's attempts, and we're all rushing towards an ionic thrust airplane of commercial design. Through Plasma Channel, I've explored two avenues to bring ionic thrust airplanes closer to reality. One being modular ionic thrusters, and two, I made an actual ionic thrust wing. I'll link the videos down below. I started with a rough prototype I called the BSI thruster, with a max output of 2.3 meters per second. Improving from that platform was the Mark II, which moved four times the volume of air at just under four meters a second. Both of these thrusters used a sequential design, meaning the same column of air was electrified and accelerated over and over. Throughout the building and testing of both those thrusters, it became clear to me that a purely sequential design has its limitations because a column of air can really only be accelerated so much. Well, during a hike one day, nature roundhoused me in the face with a solid reminder. Leaves use convergence with their veins and are optimized to accumulate sugar into one central flow. Walking along the water later that day, nature hit me again. Waves, constructive interference, another reminder of convergence, a really beautiful example of one. It made me wonder, perhaps ionic thrust could benefit from a purely convergent approach as well, where no column of air is accelerated twice. It seemed simple enough in theory. <sighs> After a six week rabbit hole of designing, building, testing, modifying, and 3D printing, plus a shocking amount of bean water, I stumbled across an entirely new type of ionic thruster, one which is hollow and relies on peripheral acceleration. So my last rendition of an ionic thruster was really well received, not just online, but also in person. Last year, I attended Open Sauce to meet fans and I brought along my builds, including the thruster. I held down a booth presence on the floor and honestly, it was swamped with thousands of people wanting to see the thruster in person. By the way, I'm going to Open Sauce again this year and I'll give more details at the end of the video. With all of the attention this thruster received, I took a critical look at the design and realized there was a lot of room for improvement, namely method of acceleration, structural integrity, and obstacle collision avoidance. I'll start with that first one. Firstly, while sequential acceleration worked well on the Mark II, it did use some peripheral intake. This provided really cool visuals of airflow because most of the flow was coming in from the front, but here's the issue. The first stage required 40 watts and resulted in 2.1 meters per second. Think about this. After that stage, the air is already moving close to the max speed that 40 watts would result in. So hitting stage two with identical power, the air is only accelerated to about 3.2 meters per second, a 50% gain. Moving on to the last stage, the air interacts with another 40 watts of power and moves close to four meters a second, only a 25% increase. This represents diminishing returns. The velocity increases to begin with were likely just from additional air inputs from the side compressing the column of air, combined with a little extra boost from the additional power. So that's the first one. Second is structural integrity. The positive electrode is composed of super fragile wire. Like, it hurts me to do this, but entire thruster no longer functional. Just one wire breaking and the entire thruster is kaput. Whew, it couldn't take a bird strike, let alone a single finger strike. So that leads me to the next improvement to be had, which is obstacle collision avoidance. Even ignoring the fragile wire, the electrical grounds traverse the entire inside, so nothing can pass through this thruster, period. The BSI Mark II design is effective, but self-limiting. To design an ionic thruster that can take real-world abuse, I needed massive improvements. Full peripheral acceleration, no thin wires, and no obstructions. This means a new topology. And that design may have just been waiting to be picked up right here from nature. So last year, I designed an ionic thrust wing. The individual thrusters on those wings were pretty much designed to take a hit, so they were the perfect blueprint to work off of. So the razors in the bottom, right there, that's the high voltage positive, and the streamlined tubing up top, that is the electrical ground. There's three of the grounds that'll be wired all together. So essentially, it'll be two high voltage positives that feed into one unified ground. 
So I'm really curious to see how this works. Let's test it. To minimize variables, I used the same power source from the wing, which outputs a meager 30,000 volts. Provided this power, the wing's thrusters were capable of 1.5 to 1.8 meters per second. Providing the same power to the new design, I had high hopes. It feels stronger. Let's see what constructive interference does. <laughs> That's a big improvement. Being me, I immediately wanted to see the airflow using dry ice. It's always interesting to see it visualized. Oh, I love how focused that stream is. Man, it's way more interesting on its side. But interesting doesn't make a plane fly, so back to the drawing board. I extended the distance between the electrodes by four millimeters, which would allow for a higher voltage input and therefore faster acceleration of air, which I then ran test for. So right away, it's actually a lot quieter. And it does feel stronger, but it's way, way quieter. What does the meter say? Crossing my fingers. <laughs> Back to the dry ice, and you can see the change in velocity pretty clearly, which also showed something really fascinating. Oh, now that's a really cool effect. As air flowed out of the thruster, you can see a separate column of air being sucked into the side of the thruster. It's really cool. It was good progress so far, but I felt like this design could definitely be pushed further, and ultimately, I wanted to move a greater volume of air. So I widened the output and added longer grounds to reduce turbulence. In addition to lengthening the grounds, I also increased the width of the output nozzle by about a millimeter, so now it's pumping out a wider column of air. So if this iteration performs better than past iterations, we should see identical or hopefully better velocity output, but now it's a wider column of air, so it's, it's actually pumping out more air. This design is pretty much optimized, so let's see what it can do. Come on, come on, 1.9, 2.5? 2.6? That, ladies and gentlemen, is 2.7. 2.7 was enough to nearly put out my propane torch or at least show the airflow in a different light. So after a few more iterations with each of them having their own advantage, I settled on a design that pumps out 3.1 meters per second with a column of air that's 50% wider than the previous iteration. In summary, model 1A produced 2.1 meters or 1.4 liters per second, 1B produced 2.7 or 1.8 liters per second. With progressively wider outputs, model 1C produced 2.7 or 2 liters per second, and 1D led to 3.1 meters per second or 3.1 liters per second. The design had reached a point where it was time to go bigger, and bigger allowed me to try some of that constructive interference that nature so kindly reminded me of. Hopping onto Onshape like usual, I sat down for a design sesh. Initially, I stacked the design sequentially only to realize I didn't utilize convergence very well. So I tried a truly convergent approach, which looked more like a torture weapon than a thruster, and eventually found that peripheral placement allowed for both convergence and a hollow center. I use Onshape for all my projects, and I'll leave a link down below so you can try it for yourself. Anyways, off to the printer it went. Normally this is a 24 hour print, but with the new Mark IV, only 15. Hell yeah, Prusa. Still plenty of time though to talk about this video's sponsor. Look, life is a beautiful thing, and unless you spend your entire day sleeping on a windowsill, blue, can sometimes be filled with moments where it would be nice to have somebody to talk to. And that's where BetterHelp comes in handy. It's a service which connects you up with a licensed therapist who's trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. I tried it myself and attempted to trick the therapist into giving me a biased response. She actually stayed completely neutral, which is awesome. So here's how it works. First, visit BetterHelp.com. After filling in a bit of information about yourself and why you'd like someone to talk to, BetterHelp searches for therapists who fit your needs. Usually within 48 hours, you'll be matched with a professional who has years of experience helping people with the topics you selected. You can access your therapist from both your phone and computer with a phone call, video chat, or messaging. And best of all, you can schedule a session at a time that works for you. Let BetterHelp connect you with a therapist all from the comfort of your own home. Go to betterhelp.com slash plasma or choose plasma channel at checkout to get a special discount on your first month. All right, this was my first time trying organic tree supports and they just looked really cool on my print. After admiring the supports for a bit, I got straight to work.
took a bit of work, but I present to you the first stage. It's such a crazy mesh of geometry and physics that technically a lot could go wrong the moment I give it power, but I did so much testing on the individual thrusters themselves that I don't foresee any true issues popping up. Now, when it comes to performance, I do have one projection. Each of the sides are angled at 22 degrees, and air columns will begin converging about 3 centimeters downstream. And about 10 centimeters out, the air columns should fully converge in a constructive manner, forcing the air straight. With this convergent design being three times the size of the individual thrusters, it would require three times the power to power it. Makes sense, right? So I wired up three of the high voltage modules in parallel and ran some tests. Here's giving it about 50% power. 2.2, 2.3, that's a pretty good start. And here's giving it about three quarters, 2.7, 2.8, 3.0. I'm pretty happy with 3.0 right now. Consider this, this single stage is 30% more powerful than the original Mark I thruster, which only outputs 2.3 meters per second. I wanted to see this thruster put together, which meant two more stages and a bit of acrylic to tie it together. <laughs> With it assembled, it looks damn cool, you have to admit. It has a hollow center, which is an intentional feature I'll talk about later. And it's just like, it's so structurally solid, which is an intentional feature of it. Um, now, I still need to figure out the individual spacing between the stages for optimal thrust, and that'll be the first set of tests coming up. For power, I used the same inverter from the Mark II thruster, which feeds into a custom flyback, then into a voltage multiplier four stages long, outputting approximately 60 kilovolts. With the addition of a bit more acrylic flare, I connected the negative and positive to power, placed spacing at two centimeters, and provided 75 watts of power. <sighs> this is the moment of faith, man. They're all put together. What you giving me? We're getting at 2.8, okay. About 2.8 meters per second, I'll take that. I then moved on to one centimeter spacing. It's such a small change, I'm not really sure if it'll make a difference. It still sounds really angry. Yeah, still 2.7, 2.8. Finally, no spacing between stages. And without any spacing between the stages, 2.8, 2.9, uh, so a mild improvement, I guess, really. Really mild improvement. Not gonna lie, I was a bit shocked by that result. I mean, this design relies on 100% peripheral input and any gaps on the side just introduce drag. So I thought slamming the stages together with zero spacing would lead to a higher performance increase, and it didn't. I don't know, science isn't a perfect science. With spacing optimized, I moved on to testing different power levels, bumping it to 130 watts. Sitting at 3.4, 3.3, 3.4. Eh, that's a pretty decent increase. Next, bumping it to 150 watts provided further increases. Dude, this is getting up there. 3.7, okay, we've got 3.8 meters per second now. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. In case adding more power caused anything to fly apart or, I don't know. I wanted to lock everything in place and finalize the design first. Trimming off 5 centimeters from each of the supports and printing out some stoppers, it was solid. So I fed it 165 watts, which led to the best numbers yet. Yes! Surpassed 4. Over 4 meters per second places this thruster on par with, or just barely above, the BSI Mark II. And it moves a massive amount of air, 21 liters per second. And I can think of a couple ways to demonstrate that airflow. Just a splash. <laughs> For science. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> Look how focused the output is. And a step up from dry ice, a massive fog maker. Two meters out and... Oh, <laughs> that's sick. Even though this Mark III thruster isn't a big jump in output, it's still an enormous leap forward. 
For example, let's say the thruster is operational like it is right now. You can see the fan spinning up. Let's say a banana flies at it. It's just going to go straight through the middle because there are no structures in the center to get in the way of a colliding object. That's the advantage of peripheral acceleration. Banana proof, man. Comparing that to the Mark II, the difference is pretty obvious. Weighing in at 490 grams, it's not lighter, but certainly stronger. This design could benefit from weight reductions and further improvements in velocity, which would make it more feasible for use on an airplane. Um, but I argue it's a step in the right direction. And I guess for the time being, I'll just have to put a couple of these on a boat. Make sure you subscribe to see all future updates, including a full-scale Ionic Thrust boat. Regarding open source, the lineup of YouTubers this year is massive. Every maker and science YouTuber you love and follow will pretty much be there. Adam Savage will be patrolling the floor, my Portuguese rocket friend will be in attendance, but the question is, will I see you there? I honestly hope so, because one of the best parts about making these videos is meeting the very people who enjoy them. Alright, you know the drill, leave your thoughts on this project down below, and you keep being classy.